We're back with David Standridge, and we're talking about the Supreme Court and, and the law of the land. Um, before we went for break, uh, I was asking you about the Bush v. Gore thing and how Justice Scalia was saying uh, Gore should never have brought it there, and that's why it got politicized a little bit. Uh, I don't know what your opinion on that is, but I'm just asking you that because sometimes people you know, bring up these things that maybe it's better if we don't take political things to the uh, highest law. The, you know, uh, the judiciary there and then have them decide, put them in the position where they have to decide between two parties there. What, what do you think you're... Well, I'll tell you, um, I, I... It's a difficult... It's a, difficult, tough, it's it's a, a tough thing. And, yeah. and I'll tell you that um, from a jurist standpoint, I don't think any of the justices, no matter how they ended up falling on that, I don't think any of them were looking at it as, okay, bring the political issue to me. To the jurists, it's a legal issue, mm -hmm. and it becomes politicized. Um, in fact, I think you were making this point when we were during our break. Correct. Um, it becomes politicized because of of what is transpiring with the litigants, the media, and the people who are involved in it. Uh, from the court's perspective, they're not there to decide political issues. Correct. They're there to decide legal issues. Yeah. And whether the legal issue gets politicized isn't so much the court's problem, or the courts doing it's the people who are reporting on it it's their problem and they're doing but I do agree that 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 case I think really has trans um, transformed the way a lot of Americans see the Supreme Court mm -hmm. both good and bad and it put them on a different level that most Americans up to that point probably never realized the extent the power the reach of what the judiciary can do in this country and to be honest with you that trickles down because that that's exactly like even on the local level, people not understanding necessarily the power of what the judicial branch can do within the daily lives of citizens. Um, on, a, on going back to the, uh, I know there's a lot of cases that the Supreme Court handles. Um, it's a, it's the law of the land, and you know I think most people understand that, and I think it, we all learn something from that. Um, I personally I realize a lot from that that. Right. We're, we're a nation that we're, we're constantly learning. And I think even the founding fathers would look at us and say, you know, we're growing as a nation. So, right. And uh, uh, it was a good learning process for all of us. And, uh, and unfortunately, we talk about it in some ways that scares individuals on, Absolutely. You know, on both sides. But um, well, uh, so far, you're, you're, uh, when you look at the Supreme Court, I know the precedents are very important in electing the justices. Uh, we often worry about who's coming in and stuff. So it keeps everyone involved as far as the process of electing a president because everyone knows they're going to you know, appoint certain justices or Absolutely. nominate certain justices. Absolutely. So you think the nominating process with the justices is, uh, how, what, what's your opinion on that, the way the president's appointed? I, 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 I certainly would not try to fix what our, I think our very wise founding fathers did. Mm -hmm. I, I have no problem with the process. Um, I have no problem with the citizens getting involved in the publicizing of these nominees. Um, what I would like to see, quite honestly, changed a bit would be people's interest level in the judiciary. Now, that may just be me speaking because I'm, I'm an attorney. Mm -hmm. um, it, it may just be from my own personal perspective, but I, I'll tell you that uh, during that process, I don't think the process in and of itself is flawed, but you bring up a very good point, and that is when we elect a president, and you hear more of it now simply because we, we have the, the Bush v. Gore or the Gore v. Bush uh, case. Um, and, and you hear more about it now. But the presidents, I mean, they're being elected with the understanding, hey, it's likely you're going to be appointing some people to the United States Supreme Court. And what's the judicial philosophy that we want to have on the court? So yeah. it's a vitally important part when people are going in and, and electing a president, especially with the, this particular uh, year, because it appears we're going to have some some justices possibly retire. Yeah, because they're get all coming up. I think a couple of them are hitting 76, right? Uh, getting up there in the age, and it does happen that they retire eventually. Right. So we always assume when there's a new president coming in, uh, there will be some changes there as far as the uh, judiciary there. Um, Overall, I think uh, there's a lot of subjects that we all, always come up that, personally for me, when I'm studying history and stuff, mm -hmm. and then you're looking at the judicial branch. Um, on, a, on, a lower, on a lower, when you come back to the state's level, um, you often see uh, uh, political issues being decided by the courts as far as ballots and things like that. Right, right. Um, and uh, so there is an element of politics being involved in the uh, judiciary. 
And it, it always comes down to because everyone wants to know what the legal way of doing something is. Right. You know, like how we uh, these ballots and all that. Mm -hmm. We go in front of a district court judge and we decide whether, you know, they have insufficient ballot, you know, uh, petitions or not. Right. And uh, recent, most recently, there was a petition. Uh, there was issues with the petitions whether they had the district numbers on it. So there, there is an element of politics involved in judiciary, and I think. Once everyone is educated, I think uh, people will start to realize that we need to inform ourselves and ed get educated. And sure. Well, if I, I would take issue with one thing that you said on mm -hmm. there. I, I agree that the perception is there's a, there's a lot of politics in the judiciary. Mm -hmm. And you know what, let's just be honest, I, I get it. I know that there is, especially when we have a system like we have in New Mexico. Mm -hmm. But the issues that you're talking about, and even as, as we speak, we've had those challenges to the petitions and-, and, and Yeah, but and those are necessary. Though. Those are necessary. Because there is a dispute there and they have exactly. to be solved in a legal manner. That's precisely my point. Correct. Because those, yeah. are, those are being yeah. determined on legal issues. Correct. Yeah. Uh, but they impact the political process. Yeah. And yeah. so certainly as an attorney, um, I, I would like to think that the, ju the judiciary is making decisions based upon legal issues, although they may impact on the political, and not making political issues and political decisions. Am I naive? I don't know. I, let, I guess I'd let others make that, that opinion on whether I'm naive about that or not. Yeah. Oh, you understand you're an intellectual. I have to ask you.